Welcome everyone to our Packers News free agency live stream virtually alongside Jim Ozarski. I am Olivia Reiner. Before we get into our discussion today, I want to remind you as always, we love to hear from everyone. Please, if you're over on our Facebook page, make sure you leave us a question, you leave us a comment, anything that's on your mind, whether it's re related to free agency or maybe even the draft, tell us and we'll address it later on in our show. First, Jim, I'd like to go through some of the more recent news that's come up since we've done our last live stream, namely wide receiver Geronimo Allison has officially signed with the Detroit Lions reportedly on a one-year deal worth valued at around a million dollars. Allison was off to a strong start in 2018. He had 20 catches for around 300 yards and two catches until, excuse me, and two touchdowns until he ended up on injured reserve. 2019, the expectations were higher coming off that injury. However, had an average season just as good as his previous season when he was on limited snaps with 34 receptions, 287 yards, and two touchdowns. Why did Allison struggle to transition in head coach Matt LaFleur's offense? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I know, you know at the start of the year, Matt LaFleur thought Allison could fit the profile of a slot receiver. Um, which sort of started the redefinition of receivers and what they would do in this offense. Um, I, you know, I don't know, I, I guess, you know, he struggled. There were a few drops throughout the year, um, but he did have a, a career high in catches with 34. I think that's easy to forget with less than 300 yards receiving. I mean, about eight, what, eight and a half, less than nine yards per reception. That's not very good. So, um, you know, it just, it just didn't materialize. I mean, for whatever the pace he was on, you know, in Mike McCarthy's offense, um, that just didn't translate, even with the trust of Aaron Rodgers. Um, and, you know, sorry, that's my uh, – my. you can hear my dog, Zosha. Also has big Geronimo Allison dogs. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's uh, – it, it's hard to say exactly what it was, um, but she's very upset about this. <laughs> uh, that she's very upset that John Allison is going to Detroit. Um, not that Detroit's not a fine city, uh, but yeah, it just I think it just like everything else, Olivia, it just didn't seem to fit in in 2019 for whatever reason. Sosha has strong feelings. That's, she has that's strong okay. Feelings. <laughs> As you said, Jim, the role that Matt LaFleur envisioned Geronimo Allison in his offense as a slot receiver didn't really work out. How likely is it that Allison will be able to have a rebound season in Detroit next year? Um, I, you know, it's likely because he's back to sort of the um, role he was in in Mike McCarthy's offense. Um, it, it's He's the third option. You know, excuse me, someone wants to visit. Oh, yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were going to get a dog eventually, guys, in, in this. This is Zosha. She's upset. Um, he he goes back to that third option behind Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay. And that's, you know, in this offense, he might have been expected to, you know, climb into that number two role or a more significant role. You know, and, and it just didn't quite work. So he's he's going to a team where he's going to see a lot of single coverage. He's going to see a lot of – a lot less attention, even in zones, Olivia. Um, those guys stretch the field. They do the thing he can't really do. Um, so – and then also you've got a real quarterback in Matthew Stafford. So of the other free agents who are leaving, I could see, Olivia, that he could have a year, especially in Detroit where Packers fans are seeing and paying attention to him where he's going to produce and, and fans might wonder why couldn't he do that here? Um, I just think in general, what they do and who's around him um, could lead to a, a bounce back season. As you said, we'll see what's in store for Geronimo Allison in 2020, but the Packers, the Packers hope that he would be a number two or a number three receiver didn't work out. However, they did sign wide receiver Devin Funches this off season per our Tom Sop, Tom Silver signs uh, reporting. He spoke to an NFC NFC scout, and that scout said that Funches could be a good number three and a decent number two. So 
perhaps very different t- types of players um, and their physical capabilities. However, for, for right now, kind of potentially his replacement, quote unquote, we do know what his, the, ter- the terms of his deal is now. It's a one year, $2.5 million deal for Funchess. In 2019, he signed a one-year, $10 million deal with the Colts. However, he only played one uh, one game after he broke his clavicle. Given his injury history and the Packers' cap situation, which they're pretty cap-strapped, how fair of a deal is this for both sides? Um, I'd say it's pretty fair. Um, You know, again, the collarbone injury, I think, is is a little flukish. I mean, I think Packers fans know that with Aaron Rodgers. Um, you know, so I think they're clearly hoping that it, whatever that break was or breaks, they are, uh, <laughs> again, very strong opinions. Um, you know, that that's uh, clearly healed. Um, we'll, we'll see if when the team finally announces that, um, as a social, um, <laughs> One moment, everyone. <laughs> hey, these are the benefits of working from home <laughs> and being self-isolated. You get your, your dogs uh, joining. Don't let Olivia fool you. She is extremely excited, Zosha. I am. Parents. So, at, <laughs> and, and proceeded to wreck the home studio. Um, you know, there, it's, so yes, it's a, it's a fair deal in that way um, because it's incentive laden, right? And it's kind of like Kirksey. It's kind of like Rick Wagner, where guys who are hurt, um, if they stay healthy, can make more money. Um, and look, Funches had a okay career in Carolina. Um, some could argue it was a little underachieving as a second round pick, uh, but clearly the Colts felt one year, ten million. Him and Andrew Luck were going to be able to have a great, uh, com- you know, chemistry and. and do some big things in the past game. So with Devontae Adams on the other side, um, you know, he presents that big body and clearly, you know, if he can still run and catch um, the collar and if the collarbone is not an issue, Olivia, I think it's a, a win-win for both if he can stay healthy and, and, you know, be that sort of number two that they were looking for last year with Allison and Alan Lazard and kind of that rotating group of guys that, that didn't have, you know, great seasons, if you will. Good deal on both sides. Very good points, Jim. However, I would say Zosha made some actually some better points. You should you should get her on full time, and maybe you can take a break next time. We don't we don't need you going yeah. forward. <laughs> she uh yes so uh, yeah her she has made many appearances over phone interviews. Not the podcast with Tom though. That that one she uh, she managed to stay away from. But generally, Olivia, it's like whenever myself or my wife, uh, who's a radio DJ having to broadcast from home, are on the air of doing something like this, she knows it's time to talk <laughs> and get in the way. Well, we'd be happy to have Zosha return to our show, just as the Packers are happy to have punt return specialist and running back Tyler Irvin return to the team. Was that a good transition there for you, Jim? Uh, Irvin is coming back to the Packers officially. They made that announcement today on a one-year, $1 million roughly deal. However, uh, his contract will count less against the cap because of the veteran minimum benefits. So the Packers certainly will appreciate that in 2020. Uh, Packers uh, were very happy to have Tyler Irvin join the team back in December because he quite literally pulled the team out of the hole when it comes to punt return yardage. The Packers were in the red. He brought him out of it. And even more so, he got more and more involved in the Packers offense as the season continued into the postseason. He was mostly used on end around tosses and even got a screen pass in the 49ers game um, in the playoffs. What are the Packers expectations for Tyler Irvin in 2020? Yeah, I think it does start again with the return game. I mean, they started 2019 with Trevor Davis in that spot and then quickly traded Trevor Davis, as we know, and then it was a black hole for however many months. So I think at the outset, this is the one free agency move um, 
that you could art that you could say right away makes them better uh, than they were for the bulk of 2019. I mean, Tyler Irvin came in very beginning of December, and and you know that's, that's the bulk of your season with negative punt return yards and, and a very diminished return game. So right away, you kind of know what you have there. Maybe there's going to be a rookie receiver that can challenge him or or be as dynamic. But at the out, at the very least, you know what you have there. Now you mentioned his use in the offense. I think uh, you know. That was a, a sign of what Matt LaFleur and Nathaniel Hackett can do when they have those kind of guys. Like, he, you're right. I mean, I, you know, in that division clinching win in Minneapolis, I mean, that one look to start the game opened up so many different things later. Uh, Aaron Jones touchdown runs and things like that. So um, I think if you were to get him in, I mean, who knows what training camp's going to look like if they have one, but if you can get him in, at the start of the season, you know, that that's that only helps because you saw what it was in just what a couple practices, four weeks. So imagine that you know, building off that playbook going forward and and having that guy from the beginning. Um, you know, all good things. He's not gonna take a ton of carries from Aaron Jones Jamal Williams, but at, at the very least, you can work him in a little bit as kind of that gadget guy. Um, which clearly worked in 2019. Urban laid a solid foundation in 2019 in the limited games that he was active for being with the Packers so late in the season. We'll see what sort of role he ends up playing in 2020. Let's move on to talking about the remaining free agents, the Packers who are on the 2019 roster that are currently free agents. And I'll put them up on our ticker right now. You can see them at the bottom of your screen the biggest names on this list are still cornerback Tremon Williams and tackle Jared Valdir. How likely is it that the Packers wait until after the draft to in- address some of those bigger names like Williams or Valdir? Yeah, you know, um, I'll start with the tackle first. I could see that being a position they don't address again until after the draft for sure. Because if you you being Brian Gutekunst's draft a tackle in the first round. Um, I mean, you now you have Rick Wagner. So why would you sign another kind of uh, veteran guy who is essentially going to do the same type of thing? If they choose to to not sign or, or draft a guy high and it's just a kind of a mid-round pick and you're not sure, you know, how that's going to shake out with the other tackles um, on the roster – then if Jared Valier is available, it still makes sense. I mean, right now, I mean, anything can happen, Olivia, where March 30th, the draft is less than a month away. Um, sort of assuming he lasts a month, but it's possible. Um, now, Williams is more interesting. I thought he played well enough um, to warrant more action, if you will. And who knows? I, I mean, at this point, he has made it known that he wants to stay in Green Bay. Um if, if he can at this point in his career. So maybe that's just one of those deals where if some other team wasn't going to wow him with a salary demand, if basically it's like, Hey, one year, maybe two year vet minimum. And that's, it's all the same. Um, And the Packers are just like, look, we need to do some other stuff. We'll get back to you. I mean, who knows guys like that. You you can maybe work that sort of communication a little differently um, than maybe a guy you don't have as much history with. Um, so Williams, I could also see, you know, as they look, they, they still, it's the Kenny Clark thing. I mean, that, that's really slowing things up. I mean, you're really seeing only these million dollar deals. I mean, Funches, by the time that gets filed, Olivia, um, like the actual money against the cap is so little compared to what it could be later. Um, you know, so I can see after the draft for sure. Uh, but Williams, it wouldn't shock me if they get it done a little sooner just because he's, I think, a, a still a better player, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll see what ends up going down. Of course, as we say these things now, that means that it's going to happen tomorrow, right. right? The Packers are going to make – or Tremont Williams will make some decision tomorrow. Right. And we'll be back to talk to you <laughs> all about that if that happens. Let's go to some of your questions now. Over on our Facebook page, thank you, everybody, Bill. Let's say, oh, Bill's from Mexico. Hello, Bill. Hello. We've got lots of you in our comments. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. 
I'm actually, let's start with David. Um, he asks, so uh, Blake Martinez had his introductory press conference, inside linebacker Blake Martinez had his introductory press conference with the New York Giants media today. Um, I can read you some of his comments about the Packers specifically. I thought they were interesting. David asked, what was our take on Martinez's comments in New York? We can address this next part of your question here, David, in just a moment. But let's start, Jim, with what Blake Martinez said about the Packers, um, specifically about the Packers' defense and how he was utilized. So this is a, a quote. Um, pretty much Martinez said that um, the Packers – had talked about the way that he valued about, about how they valued him and how he valued himself. And those were on two different wavelengths. He talked about being taught to be a cleanup sort of guy when it came to backing up the Smiths um, at the edge rusher position and being on, on like cleanup duty in a way. Um, What do you make of these comments and how, um, how are, Packers, how are, how are we supposed to um, interpret what he had to say about um, the way he was used in the Packers defense? Yeah, I, you know, I never four years um, here and in the couple years that I've been around him now, um, I don't take Blake Martinez as a guy who um, would speak total falsehoods to the media. I think he's smarter than that. Um, and what I mean is now if, if we can get Matt LaFleur before the draft, which we are supposed to, um, I mean, I'm sure Matt will defer and demur. I can't imagine him stoking this. I, Mike Patton, we're probably not going to see or hear from until, I don't know, whenever training camp might happen <laughs> the first of the season at this point. So um, it's hard to say or hard to dispute his take on his role. Because unless someone comes out to redefine it or clarify it or say that that's untrue, um, we have to take him at his word. Um, And if that's the case, uh, I mean, it would make sense, right? Because that's because I think that's his way to explain why everyone says he makes tackles five yards on the field, why he doesn't have interceptions or forced fumbles or because I think this is him just saying he wasn't asked to do those things. Um, you know, just sort of to, to, you know, again, clean up, if you will. Um, so, I mean, it's interesting because you don't really hear guys talk like that, um, you know, but I, I can't say that he's wrong, I, you know, um, and I'm not going to, you know, is that a criticism? I don't know. I mean, if that was his job, that's his job. I, so I, I guess I didn't take it one way or the other other than just him explaining maybe why he didn't have a bunch of sacks and tackles for loss. Um, I guess we'll have to wait until we hear from everyone else. If he is, if that was true Um, or if some version of a truth, I guess, (laughs) if you will. Now you mentioned the, um, they value inside linebacker or not. I mean, that's been clear. I mean, right. I mean, Tom Silverstein reported at the combine, I think top end at linebacker was going to be around eight, million dollars and that's if Christian Kursky is going to hit if he plays every game and hits every incentive um so that's just that is a position in Petten's defense Brian Gutekunst that they feel is worth some money but not 10 million a year Mm -hmm. and then the second part of David's question here is how much say does defensive coordinator Mike Petten have when selecting a linebacker or really any defensive player during the draft how much of it is Brian Gutekunst and his team? How much and how much of it is Mike Pettin saying, hey, this is what I'm looking for in my defense? Oh, I would say it's 99.5% Brian Gutekunst um, and his group. And then Mike Pettin, you know, I mean, they inter, well, I guess they used to interview these guys. I, I guess now with these prospects, Olivia, they can talk on FaceTime or. Uh, digital meetings for up to three hours in a week. So, you know, the the coaches are going to have that, but the Packers are a team that, um, look, they're, they have a scouting department. They have a pro personnel department. So while there is communication, clearly, as Mike Patton talked about with signing the Smiths and Amos, you know, there's a list. They run through it. Um, you know, there's some back and forth, of course, but at the end of the day, I think the Packers are set up where, 
personnel makes the personnel decisions. The coaches have an input, but it's, you know, if Brian Gutekunst drafts a quarterback in the first round, I mean, clearly that, you know, that's his call. Um, <laughs> whether or not the coaches want it or not. I mean, I think, I think the Packers do that and they, they've been that for a long time. Certainly there is communication. However, ultimately they have their own jobs to do. So thank you, David. Appreciate your question. We'll take Michael's question now. The oft asked question. And if we put on our thinking caps and look into our crystal balls, Jim, perhaps we can answer Michael's question. What position do you think the Packers draft in the first round with that 30th overall pick? Jim, if you had to pick a position right now, whether it's tackle, wide receiver, defensive line, inside linebacker, we can open it up to whichever position. Which one do you think the Packers will take at 30? Um, I, it was funny. I, well, I, I took what position, meaning what number position. Do they stay at 30 or do they trade up? <laughs> no, I uh, – there's uh, no way. Yeah. <laughs> no. They, really? I, no, I think they. I think they're more likely to trade up than 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 maybe we're thinking about at this point. Um, but that's you know we've got another month before the draft for that. So in terms of position on the field, I'm going to go with tackle. Um, okay. I'm one of those those football watchers that think if you want quarterback, if you want a offensive tackle. Um, or if you want a corner that are like real dudes, you have, you have to take them in the first round. Um, so at this point, even if, you know, I think there's some argument, you know, there are going to be about four or five tackles taken early. Um, and there's some argument that's like, oh, what about the value? Like, is it Ezra Cleveland or Josh Jones? You know, if they're the sixth best tackle, are they worth picking at 30 when, you know, the third best safety or, or whatever? Um yeah, sometimes if, if that guy projects as sort of the franchise starter, I think you have to take him. Um, we don't know Goody's board, but, I, you know, they need that guy. And David Bakhtiari, I think we talked about this one other time, Olivia, is such a unicorn in the fourth round. You need to – you can't count on that. Um, the undrafted guys, good guys in that locker room, they're good to have, but they're not going to be – the star starting tackle. You need them. You got to pick them early. So I'm going to go with tackle. Um, that's if they pick at 30. If, big if there. At least Jim thinks so. We'll see if the Packers decide to move up or down. Thank you, Michael, for your question. Josh makes this point, someone that we didn't discuss when the free agent ticker came up at the bottom of your screen. I took it down. However, Strong safety Ibrahim Campbell was on that list of current Packers free agents. Josh says that the Packers should go ahead and bring back Campbell. We know Mike Pettin likes to have a safety in the box alongside inside linebacker, on, alongside the inside linebacker on some of those passing downs. How likely is it that the Packers go ahead and bring back Campbell in 2020? I mean, the fact that he has not signed elsewhere – um, to me only increases that likelihood, that probability. Um, you're right. I mean, they do like him. Um, you know, they brought him in. He played, what, right away? Last year comes off PUP. They're like, oh, maybe he won't play. And then what did he do? He played like 60% of the snaps against Carolina. So good locker room guy, good guy in that room. I think he fits more of what we were talking about earlier with the who can you sign after the draft type of deal. Um, if they don't, pick a safety high or a guy who plays his position um, at, at a high point. And they're just like, look, we need more bodies. We need, we want that guy uh, to at least start the year on the 90. I mean, that's the difference, I guess, Olivia, is, is a guy like that is going to – look, there are veteran, veteran minimums. He's going to make more money um, in 2020, um, have a bigger signing bonus, all of those things. So I think I could see that being something they wait – you know, till after the draft. It sounds like Zosha show agrees with Josh yeah. that the Packers should sign. <laughs> exactly. She, she has many Packer opinions. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I'm glad that both you and Zosha were able to join us, Jim. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks to all of you for joining us as well. We will be back later in the week, possibly next week as the Packers continue into free agency and the draft gets closer and closer. I cannot believe we're almost there. 
Still a little ways away, about a month away. However, it'll be here before you know it. In the meantime, make sure you're checking out PackersNews.com for all of your Packers news. <laughs> We're doing a very fun draft preview gym over there as well. Some profiles on some potential picks that the Packers could make with that 30th overall pick. So we'll see if any of those names end up making it as the number 30. But until then, everyone, thank you. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you next time. See you.